Why women are done, the Megtel movement explained. Hey everyone and welcome to One Male. For a long time now, women have been at the top of the food chain when it comes to dating, relationships, and getting what they want. But now there's a new movement on the rise called Megtel, which stands for men going their own way. In this video, I'm going to talk about what it is, how it works, and why more and more men are joining up every day. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I'd want to go over a post on Reddit called, I can feel it in the air, women are done. Someone by the name of Teddy came up with it. His line of reasoning and logic makes the same error that I, along with many other people both before and after me, have made. We had the mistaken belief that if we went our separate ways, along with the many other men out there who did the same thing, other men would notice this pattern and walk away from women, resulting in the women's misery. But someone with the username American Jedi commented the below that post. Nope. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but that is not the case. Many men are interested in dating, want to be married, and want to start families. When I look around in public, I notice that even the most obese and unpleasant ladies have a megta, and slim ladies have a wider selection of available males to choose. There will not be any shift soon. You can be sure that this is the case if you use an app like Tinder. For example, the top 40 or 50% of the most attractive women whose profiles you swipe on don't come back to you. If they have achieved their objective and their world is crumbling like a cheap suitcase, they will gladly take any attention they can get. Even if women never had sexual intercourse with men again, they would still be dependent on the money men pay in taxes to maintain them financially. This is something that a sizable number of the less appealing people working in unionized government jobs have admitted to engaging in. After embarking on my course of action in the beginning, I eventually arrived at Teddy's way of thinking approximately a year and a half later. Those women were done. However, after photographing one event for a female client, I started to have second thoughts about my decision. I was gathering photographic as well as cinematic evidence for her. I would estimate that I took something in the neighborhood of 500 images and videotaped for at least an hour and a half that night. Everything went off without a hitch on my end. Even though she lost her cool with the caterers and her husband, he was a highly successful man who owned an important tool and dye business, and yet there he was, moping around with a lady who treated him like dog poo despite all of his success. Her spouse was the man who owned the firm, and he was a very successful man. Because he was under her enchantment, he could not do noticeably better than he already had. Not only that, but he had previously been married to other women. Afterward, I returned to my house, believing that my work was finished and there would be no further inquiries. I emailed her the photographs and the movie the following day after she requested them. The video lifted her mood, but the film's content infuriated her. Regarding the video, she had positive feelings, primarily because while I was taking the other 500 images, I snapped 15 shots of the folks who were helping me out. To illustrate to everyone that I am careful and that I make an effort to take photographs of everything and everyone that I possibly can, the point of this exercise is to serve as a demonstration. However, this caused her to become irate, and she began behaving as though I were her husband or wife. After that discussion, I realized that if ladies like her can find a guy in their lives, then most women can do so successfully. I came to this conclusion because if she can find a boy in her life. The couple in question consists of a woman in her 60s and a man in his 70s. From what I've seen, I've concluded that older men have a far higher tolerance for the emotional abuse that women dish out than younger guys do. It's possible they no longer let it affect them as much as they did in the past. They may be better at covering up the fact that their souls are shattered. After thinking about it further, I realized that women are never complete. They will keep going even if unpleasant individuals surround them and they will date to obtain attention, and they are always thirsty for all of the men out there wearing pants. I think the only time in a woman's life when she may truly consider herself done is when she is in her 70s or older. This is because so many males in their age bracket have already passed away by that point. Regarding the issue made by American Jetty, which indicates that many guys in today's society choose to date the women who are both the heaviest and the most disagreeable, this assertion is, regrettably, correct.
What about all the reprehensible people who live alone and assume they won't be seen going around because they aren't in public? I secretly desire that most of the males who live in their society be unable to see the women you follow as they go about their daily lives. It's possible that the presence of males who were already traveling with these ladies was why my generation in the United States was the first to take notice of them. I have concluded that even women in their 30s or 40s who have the appearance of being wise or middle-aged but who, in reality, have a higher IQ and a friendly demeanor and are comparable to the typical Megalosaurus may still obtain guys. They are significantly more appealing than they were when they were younger. I found a pressman who said that to attract younger and sexier ladies, we need to have a lot of CNC, cash, and charisma. The pressman stated this. Women over 40 who want to attract men who are, for example, in their late 20s, if they have a man's mind to go along with their middle-aged menopausal body, they can still attract the gorgeous man. This is because menopause is a natural part of the aging process. This is especially true for women amid menopause, which is why I brought it up since their mother does not have any other children of her own. Karen Strawn provides a beautiful illustration of this topic. I know that she has been obliged to post content to YouTube for a significant amount of time. She did it all by herself, including raising her three children and attracting substantially more successful and younger men. I am acquainted with a few women who are currently in their 40s. She was one of the most astute women I've ever encountered, and when they were both in their late 20s, she married a wealthy and muscular older man, and the three of them had a child together. I've never met anyone else quite like her. Her intelligence was the primary factor in his interest in getting to know her more. For those unfamiliar with her, Karen Strawn is a female campaigner for men's rights who has amassed significant notoriety in recent years. After viewing some of her content, I come to the personal realization that she is rather clever and articulate. Furthermore, even though I'm afraid I have to disagree with Shore of her beliefs, I have to say that she is undeniably compelling. What kind of opinions do feminists have about her? I am aware that you probably don't agree with some of the things she says, but despite this, do you believe she is a powerful and self-sufficient woman? Women with lower sexual marketplace worth due to factors, such as their older age and less appealing appearance, can find men in their late 20s and early 30s with a higher market value. These guys are typically in the prime of their sexual careers. Simply by ceasing their continual nagging and shouting about political correctness, beginning to behave themselves, and providing men with calm and thought-provoking companionship rather than nagging and yelling, they may solve this problem. In addition, young men generally think that the only reason grown men are attracted to women is their physical attractiveness. In reality, it could also be because of their intelligence or financial standing. I ultimately decided to go out on my own and start dating again, and at that point, I stopped giving as much care to how I appeared to others. Instead, I am focusing more on women who have established themselves well in their life, are doing well in their careers, and have a lot of money. Even at this late stage in life, I have not given up hope of starting a family of my own. As a result, it will make our life much easier for somebody to be established financially and to have the intention of having children at some point in the future. If there are other men who, like me, believe that women are squandering their time by pursuing careers, then I don't think that many guys are considerably more attracted to successful women than I am. A woman like her might be attractive to me if I were in my late 20s at the time. However, it wasn't until I was far into my 30s that it happened to me, so I wasn't expecting it. This perspective may be the one that most women adopt when they reach their 30s in this day and age. Building a career while getting kicked in the rear while you're younger may be challenging, especially when looking for a baby milk source who also wants children. This is especially true if you want to have children of your own. Because of this, it is best to choose responsible women with well-established occupations so our lives will be less complicated. I'm here to talk to you about MEGTAL. Some of you may have heard of it but don't really know what it is, and some of you may be staunchly against it. But I think it's important for us to have an open dialogue about it so that we can better understand each other. So whether you're for or against MEGTAL, Please join me in tackling the female perspective on why they think men go their own way. Make sure to click the next video to learn more.